Let's take a look at the differences between shooting interlaced and progressive. When you shoot a normal speed video clip in Europe, it will normally have a frame rate of 25 frames per second, whether you are shooting progressive or interlaced. An interlaced frame, however, is split into two fields. These are recorded one after the other, so a 25 frame per second interlaced video sequence is actually updated 50 times a second, hence the term 50i. One field is made up of the odd numbered lines within the frame, and the other field is made up of the even numbered lines, and when played back, one after the other, they make up a frame. A progressive frame is just like a digital photograph, in that the entire frame is exposed in one instant. There are no fields. Because for any given frame rate, interlaced video is updated twice as often as progressive video, interlaced video can portray motion more smoothly. However, as many modern displays are often progressive devices, such as LCD screens, and more and more content is delivered progressively via the internet, this advantage is often lost. In addition, it's easier to resize and frame rate convert progressive material, as the processing software or hardware doesn't have to separate out the fields prior to processing, and then recombine them again afterwards, something that many software converters do a terrible job of. For these reasons, I shoot almost all of my footage progressively. One of the downsides to shooting at 25p is that the camera's shutter is open for a relatively long period, a 25th of a second. If you pan the camera across a busy scene at this shutter speed, the image appears to go soft each time the camera moves. You can see this a lot in handheld footage as well. This is caused by the long exposure period. It's not a camera fault or an issue of the codec. For this reason, it's common practice to set the camera shutter to 1 50th of a second. Doing this shortens the exposure period and the image suffers less from blurring during any camera movement.